time to zigzag our way through this video. Good morning, YouTube. What's up, everybody? I hope you're safe and healthy and happy and doing okay. So today we're gonna be talking about a shoe from a brand that I really haven't touched too much upon on this channel so far. I think back in the day, I did a video on one of their shoes and I didn't hate it by any means. But ever since then, I hadn't really come across a shoe from the brand that I felt like was something I wanted to review for the channel. Introducing the Reebok Float Zig one. Before we start talking about this little zigzaggy shoe, I do want to ask that if you're not subscribed to me on this YouTube channel to please go and do so. We finally hit 20k recently and I'm trying to climb on up. Why not make it 21k, 22k, you know, so on and so forth. Any subscription helps, so please go do that if you haven't already. And if one video a week on YouTube isn't enough for you, I suggest you go follow me on Instagram. I post tons of content there, writing content, live content, shoe content, whatever content you are desiring to help you get by from week to week. Go follow me at Run Like Heller. I first came across this shoe when I was looking at coverage from TRE. I saw a couple people wearing it or advertising the shoe, if you will, promoting it and it definitely sparked my interest. The first reason being that it's really cool looking. It's giving all the late 80s, early 90s vibes, and I just am super into that look. But it also piqued my interest because it's a running shoe and one that they seem to have put a lot of time and effort behind. Obviously, I had some reservations. The last time I wore a shoe with this zigzag patterned midsole was back when I was going to Lucille Roberts in like 2010, 2011. 11. So it's been a while and I wasn't really sure if it was going to be super functional for running. Oh, and another reason why I really wanted to review this shoe is that it sits at a really good price point. So the main question today is whether or not the Reebok Float Zig 1 can compete with the other daily trainers in this category from the major running shoe brands. But of course, first, you got to watch the run footage. start today I do want to let you know that this shoe was sent to me by Reebok however they're not going to see this video before you they can't tell me what to say and all my opinions are always my own Reebok is using an engineered mesh for the upper of the Float Zig 1. They've managed to incorporate some reflective overlays here, which is always good for safety. In the midfoot, the Float Zig 1 has a two layer paneling for extra support and wraparound feel there. And the heel counter is very sturdy. So the very first thing I have to say about this upper is that it is super comfortable. Whatever kind of engineered mesh that Reebok is using here, I'm a big fan of because I just felt like this shoe felt so nice on the top of my foot. And they even decided to put some extra padding in the ankle collar of the shoe and a little bit on the tongue, which is gusseted as well. And I think this extra padding in the ankle collar definitely helped to keep my ankle more locked down, even more so than usual. It just has a really nice step in feel and Reebok clearly didn't skimp out here when it came to the quality of the materials because it doesn't feel cheap. A couple things though, I will say that this is probably not the most breathable daily trainer that you're gonna find on the market. It's a little bit thick in that forefoot area. I do feel some air passing through. It's not a complete dead zone, but the paneling on the midfoot does make it really hard for air to pass through. So you're really only gonna get that ventilation through the forefoot. As far as the width of the shoe goes, I think it's pretty average. I have a narrow sized foot. I don't have to cinch these laces down too much to get a proper fit, which makes me think that it's a pretty average size shoe in terms of width. Perhaps if you have a wide foot though, you may be a little bit uncomfortable. Overall though, I really like this upper. I think it's good quality. It's holding up nicely after 30 miles. It looks great, it feels great, and I've had no hot spots, blisters, or irritation in the upper of the Float Sig 1, so we're calling that a win. Moving on down to the midsole. 
Reebok is using their float ride energy foam for the midsole of the float zig one and yes it is in a zig shape. Reebok says that the zig shape is not a gimmick it's actually to help keep the shoe lightweight and to create more response and energy return. The look of the midsole is slightly off-putting. Intriguing but kind of made me a little hesitant because I was like, is this really going to be a legit running shoe or is this just a gym shoe that some people can run in on the treadmill if they want to? Nothing wrong with that, but not exactly the use case that I would take this shoe out on. I'll be the first to say that Reebok changed my mind about this zigzag shape. And I don't think that this zigzag shape is anything you're really going to notice under your foot. I can see how putting the float ride energy foam in this shape does help to cut down on weight. During my 30 miles in this shoe, I took it out on pretty much just standard daily training days where I'm taking it a little bit easier. And then I also did take it out on strides because this is a daily trainer and that's what I would use it for in the wild. This shoe has a nice ride. I don't think it's anything that blew me away but on the flip side of that, it's not anything that I absolutely hated. I liked it. You have plenty of protection from the road for those daily training miles. And when I did take this shoe a little faster during my strides, I definitely felt that energy return and response that they're hoping this zig shape and float ride energy foam will provide. I felt at times like this shoe was a little too firm for me for some reason. Now that could be the temperature outside. Perhaps it was a super cold day. We've had plenty of those recently, or maybe it was just an off day for my feet. I don't know, but I did feel like at times I wish there was a little more give and cushioning. Now I'm a person who likes a lot of cushioning. So if you're not really into that softer feel, then this could be the perfect shoe for you. Now, is this a deal breaker? No, definitely not. It didn't make me hesitate when lacing up this shoe. Uh, I still enjoyed running in it. It does crush those daily training miles with ease and I think it's going to last a really long time. As far as stability goes in the running footage, I did see myself over pronating a bit with my right foot. It wasn't an issue for me, didn't feel it at all. Um, but just something to note because I know you guys ask me that. I think the Float Zig 1 is going to be compared to something like the Saucony Ride 17 or the Asics Cumulus. And I think it holds its own. I think it certainly can compete with those other brands. A solid debut for a midsole from the Float Zig 1. While I would like to see them make it a little bit softer, um, I do think that this is a shoe that people will actually really enjoy running in and can get plenty of miles out of. Turning the Float Zig 1 over, Reebok is using a carbon rubber here. They say that this geometry that they've used cuts down on weight and stiffness of the outsole rubber. Another interesting thing about this outsole is that it is banded, so it wraps over the foam a bit here in the back of the shoe and goes all the way to the front. I loved the traction on the Float Zig 1. I thought it gripped onto stuff really nicely. Uh, one of the better outsoles of 2024 that I have tried so far. Whether it was raining, whether it was muddy, sandy, that sort of thing, it just bit onto the pavement just fine. I felt confident going around turns. I felt confident going a little bit faster in it. So really, that's all you can ask for when it comes to an outsole. And as I look at the wear on it, I'm really not seeing that much at all. So uh, that is a great sign. Now for the best part of the Float Zig 1 from Reebok. This shoe is going to be $130 when it becomes available in April. That is a fantastic price for the running shoe economy of today. It is rare that you see a shoe that is under $140 and this is $10 under $140. When you think about all the shoe you're getting here for 130 bucks, I think this just knocks it out of the park. I don't think you're gonna find a shoe this good for that same price. I don't think this is gonna be available on Running Warehouse, but if it does become available there, I will link it down below. Click that link and pick up your own pair. It'll be an affiliate link, but it doesn't mean much for you. It just helps out my channel so I can keep making these videos. Otherwise, once it becomes available, I will just put the Reebok links in there and you can pick them up. Not affiliate links, just to make it a little easier for you. At this price point of 130 bucks, Reebok is giving you a real solid shoe to run in. Will you be checking out the Reebok Float Zig 1 when it comes out in April? Are you gonna get a pair? Are you gonna pass? Do you like the 90s look of this shoe? Let me know in the comments down below. Well, everyone, that concludes this review on the Reebok Float Zig 1. If you enjoyed this video, please like it down below and subscribe, and when you're done with all that, hit the notifications bell so you can find out every time I upload a new video. Can you see me? 
I can see you. I have another video for you next week, but in the meantime, get out there, get on the grind, and don't forget to run like Heller. See you next time. What's up, everybody? I hope you're safe and healthy and happy and doing okay.